Hello everybody. Today's video is a making of of Andre, Rayman 3's main antagonist. So I'll start off by showing the creation process. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you a little glimpse into the model in action through one of the in-game cutscenes I've been working on. Right now on screen is a time lapse of me making the regular Black Lum model. And that's because I didn't make Andre from scratch. I made him from the Black Lum model, which I made like five months ago now. <laughs> You can see the regular Black Lum model in my second progress update video if you haven't already. By the way, up until my last video, I've been uploading every week. This is the first video that comes after a longer break. And I just want to say how weird that felt to me. It was like something wrong was happening. <laughs> I just find it funny how quickly we get used to things. Yeah, never mind. I just thought that was a fun observation. Let's move on to some Discord questions while Mark is sculpting in the background. So first up, we got Dalek Richards asking if I know what kind of specs I'm aiming for currently. The way I see it is that I'm limited to what Unreal Engine's Lumen allows me, since that's the tech I'm relying on for lighting. In the documentation, it clearly says that Lumen targets on epic settings 30 FPS at 1080p, and on high settings, it targets 60 FPS at 1080p on console. It just so happens that my gaming laptop has similar specs to what a PS5 has. So I will be using that to try to achieve this kind of performance. Hopefully I'll be able to succeed at that even with my limited technical knowledge. But well, I guess I'll have to cross that bridge once I get there. Right now I'm still focusing on completing the Fairy Council level. Dalek also asked a follow-up question if there will be any Steam Deck or Linux system support. I never used a Steam Deck or a Linux before, and I don't really know how complex it is to build a game for those systems. So I don't think so. I'll probably stick just to Windows PC. Maybe once I release the Fairy Council level and it turns out that a lot of people are enjoying the game, which causes a high demand for a Linux port, then I'll look into it. But yeah, for the initial release, uh, I don't think so. Also, can the Steam Deck run these Unreal Engine 5 features like Nanai and Lumen? I don't actually know. Like I said, I never really looked into the Steam Deck at all, to be honest. Okay, thank you. Lovely question. Let's move on to the next one. Now we have a question from... I'll call you Smyslo. Will you make a video about some hilarious or otherwise interesting bugs you found in Squash throughout the development of the remake? Or maybe like a video with miscellaneous stuff you did? You know, I like the idea but the problem is that I don't remember any funny or interesting bugs. I'm not saying that they didn't happen. I'm just saying that I'm having a really hard time remembering any. Perhaps from now on, if they happen, I will record them and keep them for content. So maybe in the future, I will be able to make a video like this. But right now, I want to, but I just don't have any ideas for it. So yeah, thank you for your question. Though, while I'm on the topic of bugs, let me tell you, I am not a fan of the Unreal Engine sequencer. Let me go on a little tangent here. Like I said, I'm currently working on cutscenes again, and I really think it could be much better. It has some pretty annoying bugs. For example, sometimes for some reason, the animations on the character just start playing wrong. And the only way I know how to fix them is by restarting Unreal Engine. Luckily, it's just a like in editor bug. In the actual game, the animations always play out properly, so it's just annoying, not really game-breaking, but still I would much prefer if that didn't happen. And then I also feel like the layout could be much better, but perhaps I'll stop complaining and just leave it at that. Oh, and also a big thanks to everyone who, under the comment sections in the final devlog episode, told me how to smoothly blend from cutscenes to gameplay. If you haven't seen in that devlog, I go over a workaround that I made because I didn't know how to actually do it properly, but that workaround was fairly tedious to implement. If there's anyone else who would like to know, all you gotta do is on the camera cuts, when you right click, you gotta set the blend option to true, and then you can blend the cutscene and gameplay just by moving this handle over here. Okay, tangent over. So now we have a question from Scrapapa. How do I manage to handle so much work on almost pure enthusiasm? 
All right, fantastic question. Let me just put on my coaching goggles and I'll teach you exactly how to achieve any goal. No, but joking aside, this is a pretty hard one as it requires some amount of self-reflection on my part. I think it's about having both big goals and small ones. What I mean by that is that my ultimate goal is to start making my own games, which seems like such a big task. And it feels like I'm still so far off from that, that it kind of makes me feel pressured into learning this stuff and continuing this project so I can eventually one day get to this goal. But then this big goal on its own, I think is more disheartening than anything. So that's why I think you also need in conjunction these little goals and the little goals I have are things like creating a rock asset for this game or making the Rayman green can skin. Smaller things that take just a couple days and feel very re rewarding once you complete them. And I think it's best to not really think too much about that big goal. I have it usually somewhere in the back of my mind, but I don't actively think about it. I more actively think about these day-to-day -day things that I have, so, you know. I'm mostly thinking about these baby steps to not feel too overwhelmed. If you know that metaphor that's about the donkey that needs a carrot and a stick to work properly, then the big goal would be the stick, those smaller goals would be the carrot, and I am the donkey. And no joke, the fact that I am a RuneScape kid, I think really helps <laughs> because grinding in that game really teaches you patience. And you need a lot of patience if you're gonna do something for this long. Because, you know, enthusiasm or motivation will never take you very far. At the end of the day, what you really need, I think, is discipline. Although now I feel like I'm starting to actually sound like a coach, so let's move on. <laughs> okay, and then Jono is back asking, is Rayman real? Yeah, absolutely. He's always in the room with me. I can't even see him standing in the corner right now. Anyway, since the time lapse is still going, how about we have a little fun and make a tier list? That's what people on YouTube do, right? At least I hope it'll be more fun than just sitting in silence. So let's go for ranking Rayman 3 levels. I'll go ahead and drop it here in the corner so we can still see the sculpting. Starting from the beginning, we got the Fairy Council. I think overall this is a really good level. The atmosphere is really cool. There's a lot of Murphy and he's really funny. We got the infamous see you in Rayman 4 line. There are also the dancing TCs, which I really love. Every level with a TC highway automatically gets a grade up from me, because I love those. It's a really good t tutorial level, because it's not that obvious that it's a tutorial level. Like, everything is pretty nicely integrated into the story. Oh yeah, and the music slaps here. So yeah, I could give this level like an A, except that I'm going to give it a D. <laughs> because me working on this level for this many hours has taken all the enjoyment out of it. I just spent so much time looking at every nook and cranny of this level that playing through it, just like normally in the original game, I it's just really boring. So sorry, Fairy Council. I can't look at you the same way I used to. Not anymore. I actually started a poll on my Discord server. So on the side over here, I'll be placing the Discord server's rating for the levels, just as a comparison. Discord voted Fairy Council to be A tier. Okay, so now we got clearly forest. I really like the intro location, the one with the house where you have to save those teensies. And I wish we would go through more houses like that through this level. All of the rest of the level is just hoodlum outposts. And the overall setting of, of just the uh, forest is like, it's fine, but nothing amazing. Maybe it'd be better if it had this magical, mystical feeling of the Rayman 2 forest levels. The music is okay. That waterfall section with Glowbox is kind of weird. I don't think I really like that part. That canyon part is also something I never really liked that much. I just think it's a little boring. I like that rocket mini game where you use the orange power up cam. And uh, boss fight is one of my favorites, as well as the music for that boss fight. So, yeah, I guess on its own, I would give this level a C, but it ends in a teensy highway. So, I'm going to give it a B. As for the Discord votes, this one actually got a D. Cool, let's move on to the Bog of Merc. Yeah, I think this is a good one. I really like the music in this one and the overall atmosphere, the, you know, the setting of this murky bog. The boss fights are pretty fun. That boat ride secret is a nice touch. 
overall the level design i think is pretty fun here i can't think of any boring parts over here yeah this is a good one i, I think i can give this one an a as for the discord's opinion this is a c then next up is the land of the livid dead yeah this one i think pretty universally is a fan favorite it's hard not to love this one it nicely subverts your expectations everybody assumes going into it their first time that it's going to be this horror level probably and yet it's this super beautiful magical location with also amazing music the level design is really fun here i think it's where the magic hoodoo gets introduced which is one of my favorite hoodlums that magical tower part is super cool it has a tnc highway at the end yeah this one is amazing the only thing that i could do without is that underwater boss as far as i'm concerned that whole part could be just cut out of the game I don't think it's very fun. Yeah, so to no one's surprise, both me and the Discord is giving this level a S tier. By the way, the fur on the Black Loom that I've added is just for preview purposes. This is not the actual in-game fur. I just wanted to have a quick look in ZBrush to have a better idea of what it's going to look like later on. Okay, so now I moved on to the texturing phase. Though, I'll kind of skip through this one because... Honestly, it's just me kind of repainting the model the same way I did in ZBrush. In ZBrush, I was painting it just to have a better look at it, while now I'm painting it to actually make the in-game textures. But there's nothing really new happening here. So yeah, the Desert of the Canaran. I think this is my favorite level, as it's the one that made the biggest impression on child me. The Canarans are just so badass and scary. Their whole cave system looks so cool and the level design of it is something i really like the way they get introduced is so badass with that music and how they just grab glow box out of the air and those spooky ghosts were so scary i'm sure they gave me nightmares as a kid that whole eagle room is a really cool set piece the way you would get cornered and then actually captured man that would really make your heart pump and the scary shit those knarns would say mm, chef's kiss yeah, I love this one. The only real letdown for me with this level is the Reflux fight. Like he's so hyped up to be this amazing badass, but then the actual boss fight I think is really lackluster. It's just way too easy. So yeah, that would be like my only complaint. And <laughs> that minigame, before you enter the doctor, where you gotta press the buttons to squash the running hoodlums, it's just so absurd, I love it. Desert of the Knarren gets a definite S tier from me. Discord gave it an A tier, so also very high. Now on screen I included me making the fur for the Black Blum. I'm using a method called Shell Hair, and for this I'm using the Hair Tool plugin for Blender. It's a paid plugin, but it's really good for everything hair related. Although I don't want to dwell too much on this right here because um, I was okay with how it looked at the time. But then when working on Andre, I gave him straight up hair cards for his fur because I just felt like he was looking too fluffy while I wanted his fur to look more, you know, like rugged, dirty, overall like unkept. And I liked the results I got for him much better. So I will probably go back to the regular Black Lum and redo the hair. But yeah, I wanted to show just a little bit of me making the shell hair anyway, in case there was anyone wondering how it's made. Okay, now I'm actually starting to sculpt Andre. But let's not get carried away from the important stuff. The longest shortcut. I like this level. I think it's nice because it's different. I really like the whole architecture of all these rooms. Like the floors are so super clean. They're like mirrors. You have all these teensy statues. There's this cylindrical glass corridor that's really cool. There's all this courtyard that I really like. Glowbox is super funny here, thinking that he's opening all the doors. There's a Lee Easter egg. You know, that's a nice touch. Obviously, it's not the best level, but it's a welcome one. I think I'd give it a B. And Discord server is going to give it a C. Okay, three levels remaining. Next one is the Summit Beyond the Clouds. So I think the boat ride is part of this level, not the longest shortcut level. And I don't really enjoy that part. So not a great start. I really don't like the music here. The overall snowy look is okay but I prefer the look of all of the other levels. Normally I am a big winter guy. I love everything snow related, so I don't know what's wrong here. 
It might be the music, honestly. But yeah, this level is clearly not my cup of tea. The falling snowballs are pretty fun. But overall, none of this level is particularly memorable to me. Usually all I remember from it is that snowboard section. But not because I enjoy it, it's just because it's pretty gimmicky. And all I remember from it is that it feels kind of weird to play. So yeah. Sorry Summit Beyond the Cloud fans, this one is a clear D to me. This is my least favorite level by mile. As for Discord server, they gave it a C. Alright, Hoodlum Headquarters. This one is a good one. I think this level is super fun to play. It's got some great level design. The music is pretty cool. That whole foundry area, it looks great and plays great. The talking lady and Glowbox are so funny. And smart Glowbox. That line about him being better because he has more polygons than Rayman. is <laughs> It's just fantastic. That mini game where you gotta hit yours and Glowbox's uh, wooden cutouts is a fun idea. The That heart of the machine boss fight, I, I guess it's okay. Like, I don't really consider it that much of a boss fight. It feels more like, I don't know, a mini game or something. It ends on this sequence where you gotta run from the rising hot water or lava, whatever you want to call it. And I generally really like sequences like these, so this is also a very welcome ending to a level for me. I think the only real complaint I have for this level is that there's a little too many boxes, maybe? <laughs> like the whole environment is pretty monotonous, at least the first half of it. It's mostly just boxes stacked on each other. I think it, it could be a little more interesting than that. Yeah, but aside from that, it's a great level. I think I can even give it an S tier. Yeah, it's a great one. And for the Discord rating, I gotta put it at an A. Okay, and we made it to the final level, Tower of Leptis. The overall aesthetic of this tower, I think is pretty cool. Like it's fitting for a final level, I would say. The music is all right. Uh, I don't think it's as fun to play as Hoodlum Headquarters, but overall, I'd say it's still pretty fun. It has these hot water rising sections, just like the last level, but they're not really that exciting. So I wouldn't say that they make the level better. What I really like about this level are the glow box flying and shooting parts. There's this one room with these destructible pillars that fall into this Rayman 2 styled soul water. That room was pretty hype. Yeah, I really like that part. Even though the bullet flying parts in Rayman 2 I think were much better. But that's beside the point. The yes handy line is really funny. And I think the final boss is really awesome. You arrive at the top of the tower, you have reflux waiting for you but he's in his super saiyan form splashing lightnings at you it's yeah it's a great first phase then you have him you know grow so he's much scarier and then there's this final part where he chases you and that whole environment is amazing with these kind of huge plant eyes yeah those are really freaking cool yeah in my opinion this is a great final boss so yeah even though overall the tower maybe isn't as exciting in my opinion i still say it's an a tier level for the Discord, I gotta put it at a C. Overall, keep in mind that the Discord votes are more of a meme ranking. The poll got like 21 votes, so you know, it's hardly representative of anything. But I put it in anyway, just for fun. All right, there we have it. This list is now official. Everything here is a fact, not an opinion. Sorry, not sorry. And that being said, I have this one more level over here. And let me just put it right up somewhere here. Okay, awesome. And with that done, I think it's a good time to start talking about Andre. I mentioned that I use hair cards for Andre. And to create them, I use a software called Fiber Shop, the free version. It's pretty cool because it's very intuitive to use. It's very easy to get some hair cards pretty quickly. For Andre, I just made this one hair card you can see on screen right now. As you can see, I made it pretty rugged with not a lot of hair and just pretty thick hairs. Though the downside to this software is that the free version really limits your options for exporting. So in the future, I think I'd use that Blender add-on for generating hair cards because it has a lot of good options. It's just more complex to learn, but I don't think it's worse in any way than this software. Probably better, actually. The hair here in Substance Painter is not really representative of what I finally end up with. It's a little hard to show the progress here in a time lapse because there was just so much jumping back and forth. Like this is the first iteration of the hair I had and 
and I started painting these textures. Once I painted these textures, I went back to change the hair card, change the hair density. Once I've done that, then I went back to Samson's Painter to tweak the textures again. So, so kind of bear with me here. What I'm doing right now is like the first pass of textures. So I have some kind of base that I can import into Unreal Engine to see what kind of changes I need to make to actually get to what I'm aiming for. In order to lay out the hair cards on the model, I use the Blender Hair tool again using its short hair system. And I really recommend that method. I think you can get really good looking for really fast. Oh, got a last minute question from X Pim. How is it possible to make so much awesome 3D art in eight months? Well, first of all, thank you. Uh, I get that this question is most likely not meant to be taken seriously and that uh, XPIM just wanted to be nice. But there is something I want to say about this. I really should thank Unreal Engine 5's Nanite for this because without it, at best, I'd probably have just like half of what I have right now. The fact that I don't retopologize and UV almost any of the models in the project is such an insane time saver. And like, not just because doing it takes time, but also because doing it is super boring. I like the creation part of making 3D models and then the technical part is just a sad necessity that I could absolutely do without. So yeah, if I had to do retopology for all the models that I created for this project so far, I'd probably have like a strong mental debuff for the project and wouldn't be as productive as I have been. Okay, I feel like there's been enough black lump painting in this video already. Why don't I instead show you the face rig that I created? I think that's a little more interesting. Perhaps I'll cram the texture painting into the corner just in case anyone for any reason is that invested in, in the painting. Yeah, so having the experience of making the other facial rigs for the other characters, this time I made much more expressions because previously I felt somewhat limited when animating the cutscenes. Yeah, so learning from my mistakes, this time I'm having a much better time animating Andre than the other characters. And the model you see right here in Blender is the final model I did end up with, but it still doesn't look like it looks in Unreal Engine, mostly because of the shaders. Here I just have something that is easier to work with for me, while for the final look in Unreal Engine, I wanted to go for something much darker, like almost Venta Black. Yeah, but we're getting there, like five more minutes and you're gonna see for yourself. Unless you skip ahead, of course. Then you can just see it right now. <laughs> Aside from the expressions, I also have this one mouth bone that I added just for like fine tuning. I also rigged his cute little ears for some nice secondary movement. All right, back to texture painting. Holy shit, it seems I've been talking nonstop for the last 23 minutes. If you've been actually listening to me ranting this whole time, my God, thank you. I really appreciate it. So yeah, I'm pretty much done talking. Once the texturing time-lapse finishes, I'm going to play that preview from the cutscene. Keep in mind, of course, that it's all still work in progress. And if you want to skip ahead, I always timestamp all of my videos so you can easily jump ahead to the good stuff. Oh, if anyone has some memories from their favorite Rayman 3 levels that they would like to share, go ahead and write them in the comments if you want to. I'm sure a lot of people will have fun reading through those, me included. And yeah, that's all from me today. I wish you all a very good day. Goodbye.
in a pipsqueak. Soon I'll transform the energy from the heart into an army of hoodlums. And I'll deal with you. <laughs> Whoa, what could this be?